Tevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr., two winners on the season, will lead the field to the green, and it's not a good start at all for Kevin Harvick on that inside, actually. Martin Truex Jr. beats him to the line, but nothing wrong with that, of course. NASCAR changed the rules this year with beating uh, the leader to the line on the original start, and whatnot there's already in the background, getting a little spicy there, Jay. We saw Kyle Larson out of shape. He loses already a handful of positions in just a series of one and two corners. Jay's there. Is Jay there? I don't know if we have a copy with Jay. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, what I think we're going to have to watch out for early in this race, especially with them starting too wide, is, is three wide. That's two wide they can handle fine, but if you see anybody get three wide, especially further back in the pack, I think three wide is going to be something that's going to be really, really sketchy for these drivers, especially the one on the outside coming off the corner because, again, those walls jump at you really fast. Daniel Suarez gains a few positions there on the opening couple of laps. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. up inside the top 10. Specifically, Tyler Reddick. He hasn't won a race, but he has been consistent. Leads the points by just over 30 points over Kevin Harvick. And showing why he's leading the points. Doing things like this right here. Once again, challenging for the lead. And you'd have to think that Tyler Reddick's time to win is coming because he's had such a fantastic year. Obviously, like you mentioned, leading the points. Hasn't been able to find his way to victory lane quite yet, though. He's led lots of laps, been in contention late in several races, but just never able to find himself in victory lane. And you can see right there, he makes the pass on Harvick. But then right away, Logano seems to be pretty quick and is immediately challenging Reddick for the lead almost as soon as Reddick gets it. So he clears him right there off turn, turn, uh, off turn four. Ross Chastain on just lap seven of this race is up into the 11th position passing his team at Suarez. But what's important to note about that, this guy started outside of the top 20. But right now, I think Chastain, Larson, I feel like we can look at them as maybe the two fastest cars on the track. They've been the only two, really, that have been able to consistently make passes throughout this whole stage. But obviously not enough time for them to get any further than where they're at now. But still, nonetheless, I mean, really good charges from Chastain and a good comeback from Larson here in stage one. Now he's going to have to keep that speed uh, for the rest of this race. He wins stage one and I believe for Tyler Reddick uh, that is his, potentially his first stage win of the season. I'm not too sure because I don't have the thing pulled up. That is his first stage win of the season. So We're back underway. Martin Truex Jr. right on his tail there uh, as he moves up after that pit cycle. Joey Logano on the other hand who was second there in stage one. Well he's now down to 20 second loss 20 spots there in the pit cycle there maybe spent some extra time repairing potential damage there Hamlin already up the inside the attack is on for that third position there as I believe I think I just heard some contact in the background but no it looks like we're actually okay uh, as we continue to see these guys scrap it out now as you got Alex Bowman up the inside of Justin Haley but Jay immediately what we gotta watch is Kyle Larson Chastain do they still have that speed back out of the field Daniel Suarez he's been unfortunately falling down this whole race so far started inside the top 10 just in front of him you see the 45 of Kurt Busch on the outside while there's some damage on the left side of Kurt's car and certainly a little bit of damage now on the right side of that car but again Suarez started inside the top 10 now down to 23rd place Bubba Wallace just in front 22nd and Kurt Busch 20th Chase Elliott Jay gonna be interesting to watch him as well. I mean, we saw absolutely no speed out of that nine car in stage one, way off of his other three teammates who are running up towards the top 10 or maybe just barely outside the top 10. But Elliott could barely crack the top 20. And it looks like so far, there's at least a little bit of speed in that car. He's been able to make a few moves uh, as he tries to look up the inside of Chase Briscoe. Yeah, he certainly has been the, the worst of his four teammates so far today at, at Dover, and he really needs to have, I think, a, a better run today because his teammates, I think the last couple of weeks, have been kind of outrunning him a little bit, and this happening again so far at Dover early on in Stage 2. Uh, or 10th in the standings, sorry. So it's been a solid season so far for that 18 of Kyle Busch, but certainly not the day right now that he might be looking for there. Chastain's rebounded so far up in 8th place after losing some ground on this opening start. You see Kyle Busch now working on that 16 of AJ Allmendinger trying to get to the side inside of the top 10 side by side down the back straight away there and sure enough he's going to be able to complete that pass but don't count out that 20 of Christopher Bell Jay Christopher Bell uh, been usually running about mid to low teens so far this season but today he's starting to step it up a little bit here been battling for a top 10 position for the majority of the day just hasn't been able to quite get into that top 10 and for Christopher Bell last week I believe he was just outside the playoffs uh, and now finds himself inside the playoffs. Not by a, a terribly great margin, but certainly uh, 31 points is going to feel pretty good for Christopher Bell. And like you mentioned, having a pretty good day so far compared to where he normally runs just outside the top 10 right now uh, for that 20 car. Right behind his teammate Kyle Busch has also worked his way right inside the top 10. So Three and four, and it will be Tyler Reddick coming through to win the first two stages of sweep and maximum points so far for Tyler Reddick over Denny Hamlin there, who will round it out in second positions. Here's what happened under 
Aaron Caution. You're going to see Eric Almarola, but not only Eric Almarola, a bunch of others right here have a really weird moment. And you can see a bunch of drivers all by themselves lose control of their cars, including McDowell, McLeod, the 77, the 7, the 66, 21, Biffle, uh, Cody Ware, rookies of Gilliland, Kozlowski, the 43, and of course, all the way up to Eric Almarola. A very weird moment uh, under caution to take place here in Dover. The green flag is out, and Tyler Reddick will lead the field back to the green. He won stage one, he won stage two, let every lap in stage two. He's been dominating so far. Still has come up short of a race victory, but Jay, I mean, what better, what better timing would it be for Reddick the day he gets his first stage win of the season to go and get his first win of the season? The thing we have to watch out for, though, is, is Denny Hamlin. He was incredibly fast again on the long run at the end of stage two, and this time around it's going to be an even longer run than we had before. So for Denny Hamlin, he looks like he has an incredibly good long run car, and that's going to be something to watch out for as we get longer into this race. But you saw back there a big, giant stack up of cars together. With a bunch of these cars who were just involved in that weird incident that we saw in the 78, he had trouble oh, he's in the wall. going for a long time. And, yeah, right there, top of three wide, gets in the wall a little bit, still having issues and causing a bunch of stack-ups back here. And the one car right there, the 45, the guy we've been highlighting all races, had a terrible season so far. He doesn't need this to be happening cool. to him. And if it wasn't for the phasing right there, we would have we would have just had a big crash. Jay, we can put a blanket over the top three drivers there. Some loud cars of Cody Ware and uh, Brian Kozlowski kind of allowed Truex and Hamlin to get closer. And they are sticking with that number eight of Reddick. And they are all over him, ready to pounce any moment. Yeah, and if these two find a way to get side by side, I think you'll certainly see Kyle Larson. As I just as I said that they do get side by side. Now I think Kyle Larson, if they stay side by side for and fight for a few laps, that'll allow Kyle Larson to get into this mix as well. We might have four cars under blanket for the lead, but Martin Truex Jr. looking to make a pass for lead for the first time today. Uh, Reddick so far has not looked that great in this stage compared to what he was earlier in this race, and has had Truex and Hammond all over him the entire time. Truex to the inside this time. Almost was able to clear him, not able to into three and four, but exiting three and four. He is clear to the lead, Martin Truex Jr. Over and the leaders have just engaged in lap traffic battle here in on the exit of turn two. Closing in on green flag pit stops as well as you see Jay Tyler Reddick. We thought might have been falling off a little bit, but you know the lap traffic has immediately brought him right to the back bumper of that 19 of Martin Truex Jr. And now it's a race of who can get through the traffic the best plus green flag pit stops coming up momentarily. Kyle Larson might have an opportunity here to maybe slip into third. Hamlin's going to get caught off guard a little bit there on the outside. Yeah, Hamlin slid, Hamlin slid up the track. Now they're going to be three wide with that lap car, the 78. But Kyle Larson does get past him. It slides into third place. Larson's been extremely quick on this long run so far as well. And the six car right now getting in the way of Martin Truex Jr. a little bit. You can see him having to stack up. And the actually, they may be heading to the pit lane. That's a good decision to make, I think, for both Martin Truex Jr. and Tyler Reddick. They're going to not have to deal with Kozlowski. Now side by side, all throughout the top five and the top ten of this field. I mean, it's like we just had a restart all of a sudden, Gary. They are side by side all throughout. Positions changing everywhere. Lap cars in the way. And all of a sudden, Kyle Larson is going to find a way to, to sneak away here and pull away for third place. Two by two it was there. And I would expect to see this right here. Some drivers uh, pitting, but a bunch staying out Kyle Larson's in and he's bringing LaJoy uh, Blaney Elliott with him stay green here you're gonna have to pay attention to these cars merging onto the track Jay we have cars stopped at the pit entry and it looks like I think they keep it green I don't see any yellow lights on the track and yes we do stay green here's a look at what happened no caution flies but McDowell lately decides to pit and Jay Hits the perils and cleans out Alex Bowman Hamley gets a piece of it too two of the top five runners bubble Wallace piles in as well that's two years in a row we've seen Dover be an issue with the with the barrels there the, uh, coming into the pit lane. And I was wondering if the leaders or if some of our top five runners got affected by that. Well, you saw there they certainly did. Denny Hamlin got a big chunk of it. So did Alex Bowman. And so did uh, William Byron and Bubba Wallace as well. All of them receiving some kind of damage out of that incident and going to wind up slowing them down on their pit stop here. And, and that's why uh, we saw Denny Hamlin lose so many spots on the pit lane. Ross Chastain with a great run today. Currently fourth place. Ryan Blaney with a nice rebound back into the top five over Kevin Harvick. Christopher Bell up here in seventh place Kyle Busch uh eighth and Chase Elliott manages to get up into ninth place and Logano in the top 10 as well some nice rebounds for a lot of drivers here and and yeah you can see him right there I mean Truex pretty much breezed right by him and actually Larson is side by side with Reddick finally for second place this could be the moment for Larson finding his way potentially into second place not clear yet but off turn four looking to be cleared Reddick gets the run on the outside still side by side down into turn one Larson trying to make the move on Tyler Reddick find himself into second place and go and hunt down Martin Truex Jr. who is still dealing with some lap traffic but can't get clear still side by side now he gets clear off of turn two and Kozlowski as well. They're having to deal with him once again. So Lars is going to try and follow uh, Greg Biffle to get through Brad Kozlowski. But you can see 
they are really having to check up behind even Biffle, and, and Redick is trying to perhaps uh, tuck his nose under Kyle Larson for second place, but not able to do it. They get under Greg Biffle for the final time. Through three and four, Martin Truex Jr. is going to get a second win of the season. Oh. There is a Ryan Priest stuck to the inside, but somehow Kyle Larson holds off Tyler Reddick for second place. Tyler Reddick, I think, is at this point starting to despise a 19 car because that is two times now we've seen Tyler Reddick dominate a race and wind up losing it to Martin Truex Jr. Absolutely. Saw the 15 parked on the inside. Uh, turn four, maybe just an awkward uh, moment of him trying to get into the pit source. Spun out, we'll uh, take a look at it uh, after, but nonetheless, we'll throw it in the highlights. It was something noteworthy. Martin Truex Jr., though, wins for the second time this season, and for both wins he's picked, he has had to pass Tyler Reddick uh, so far both times to do it. He, just, he did it with a few laps to go in Bristol Dirt. Obviously did it a lot earlier this time around here in Dover. But win number two on the season for Martin Truex Jr. At